It seemed like I had an extra gear. I take it for pretty much anything. It was a subtle difference, but a very noticeable difference. I felt hyper-focused. It helped me be present. I'm able to recall everything so much faster. I'm able to choose words that more encapsulate my thoughts. It will help with your creativity. A lot more relaxed, a lot more calm. At the end of the day, I, I still feel like I can go a whole nother day. I've been way more productive. I've just been able to get so much more stuff done. It does stuff. I love it. It does not get better than this. <laughs> Dude, I get this 10 thumbs up. Alpha Brain, stop killing yourself and be a savage like your Uncle Joey. Welcome back to the Final Shot Podcast. Today on the show, we've got a returning guest. He's an undefeated Canadian boxer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the boss, Josh Wagner. How's it going, brother? What's up, man? What's up? Thanks for having me back on. It's been uh, it's been a while since I've been on, so it's good to it's good to see you, man. We we were gonna link up for the the fight that was gonna happen before this. The fight fell through, and then we never did nothing. So I'm glad I get to talk to you tonight. It was kind of a, a short notice thing. We we kind of pieced her together in the last couple of days. Yeah, man. Uh, well, the Artem fight got canceled. We were supposed to talk then. I think that was in April, and it's it's been four or five months since then. And now we got something lined up. So I figured it's time to come back on. So here's what here's what drives me nuts about being the podcast guy is when a fight does fall through, the guys don't want to come on. And I'm not saying that you didn't want to come on because I know you do. But just to, just for the guys out there, if your fight does fall through, you get hurt, your opponent gets hurt, come on anyway. I don't give a flying fuck. I just like talking and getting everybody's story out there. So, so come on, do the show, 20 minutes, I don't care, whatever you want to do, but let everybody know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, for sure, man. And that, that was my bad. I probably should have hit you up and said, fuck, come on anyway, because I know you'll do it. Well, I was, I mean, I get where people are coming from. They're probably a little pissed off and not fighting. So they're all, why am I doing the show? But I think uh, any exposure is good exposure. And just talking boxing, I love doing that. So Yeah, 100%. So you have a fight inked. It's ready to go, but it's in America. Yeah, so it's in Springfield, Massachusetts. So it's just outside of Boston. Um, we There was a matchmaker that kind of sent us a couple names and then we sent them back and we we got a thing lined up so i'm pumped man i want to i want to fight down south that's i mean i love fighting in canada and my hometown and stuff like that but yeah i mean the end goal is to be fighting in the states um getting my name out there there's more exposure there's more people there's more money so i'm 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 really pumped for this one was it danny mack the matchmaker that that linked this one up for you yeah okay yeah so he reached out to us, um, and then we kind of looked over the guy. Uh, we think it's a great opportunity. He's going to be, he's from Philadelphia. He's 7 and 0 as well. Uh, I'm 7 and 0, so it's its two undefeated guys. I know everyone loves to watch that, so it's going to be a fan favorite fight. And uh, I mean, like I said, I'm, I was ready. I trained eight weeks for Artem, and that was a 10 round fight. And then I, once that fight fell through, uh, I took like two weeks off uh, just to recoup and kind of kind of settle from that, and then I was right back in the gym. So this one's uh, six rounds. Uh, we're co-main event on UFC Fight Pass, August seventh, and uh, it's a big opportunity for me. He's from Philadelphia, so I mean he's skilled. I, I I don't have much film on the guy, but I you know checked out his social media. He. Uh, not that this matters at all, but this is Danny Garcia's cousin, so there's going to be eyes on the fight. So yep. it's my time to shine, man. And that's I show up like I'm I'm a beast in the gym, and I just I can't wait to be under the lights again. It's that's what that's what I do this for. So this is an an exact situation that you want. This is what you want. Yeah, you you. Right. I, I hate to say waste of time, but you spent some time doing some stuff that you weren't supposed to be doing. You should probably have been fighting, but now you're going to make up for lost time taking tough fights, which everybody has to respect. And uh, this is a this is a tough one where you're going to go into somebody else's maybe backyard or or their country and, and compete. Well, 
everyone can tap into it. So it's not it's not uh, in his hometown. Obviously, he's an American. Mm-hmm. He's born in Puerto Rico. Uh, he lives. In, it's not his promoter. So it's not either one of our promoters. Yes, he's an American. So you'll have that. Like you know, the Americans are going to be cheering for him. But I already know once they see me come out and start throwing hands, like I'm going to gain the fans. Mm-hmm. I already know. I already. I can. I can tell you that right now. So. And I've been training. I got. I've been ready for this. I haven't. I haven't stopped training uh, since a year and a half ago when I when I got myself straight and mm. told myself I'm I'm doing this again. And obviously, you know that last fight in November, I showed people that I'm not just like I, I can box. You know what I mean? I can box and move. This fight, um, you know. After that last fight, we watched it a bunch, and you know I let my hands go, but I wasn't sitting down on my shots. Like mm-hmm. I like, you know, I want to put guys to sleep. So like for this fight, the game plan, we want to uh, obviously we're gonna box smart, but uh, we're gonna sit down on the shots a bit more, and and uh, I'm gonna put this guy away. That's I want to make a statement with this fight. So. No, just aesthetically in your face from what I, I'm looking at you right now from the last time we talked, you look like you could quite possibly be in better shape. I'm in way better shape. And me and my coach were just talking about this. Uh, he's actually, he's in Tokyo, Japan right now. He, he's at the Olympics. Mm-hmm. He's an Olympic coach for uh, Jamaica. Okay. So, uh, shout out to my boy, uh, Big 12, Ricardo Brown. He's in the super heavyweight division. He's fighting uh, on the 28th, I believe, against India. He got a pretty decent draw, so we're all rooting for him. Nice. He's my he's my training partner. We're in the gym all the time. So, um, but yeah, my coach is in Japan right now. So me, my brother, and my training partner. He's all there. He's also professional. Uh, Jake Dayu. He's he's two and zero, uh, and so we're gonna go down and just do our thing, man. I'm, I got my game plan and I'm ready to go. So, but yeah, speaking of my my weight. So my last fight was at one fifty two. Yeah. Uh, this fight will be 147, so that's where I want to campaign. Um, I made 152, no problem. My weight's amazing right now. I feel I feel great, so we're ready to go. And uh, the other day, I had uh, The Rock, Jesse Wilcox on, and your name came yeah. up. We talked about I see, you. Yeah, that's my boy, man. That's, <laughs> he's, he's a really good friend of mine. Uh, we fought twice in the amateurs, and we kind of we gained a, a friendship. And uh, now that I'm back... And I'm living in Ontario again. We can kind of get that working, and we we sparred a couple times here in the past couple of weeks, and it's he's he's awesome, man. He's he's good shit. You're not going to get much better work than that, though. He's he's a re- he's fantastic. Oh, he's top. He's top level, man. He's he's top level sparring. He's 15 and 0 as a pro. He's got a fight coming up uh, against Brandon Brewer. That's mm-hmm. going to be. I'm looking forward to that one too. That's going to be a sick fight. Oh, but yeah. I. I I mean, I don't know much about Brewer. I know he's a tough guy. I know he has, you know, he's he has experience. But uh, I see Jesse. I see Jesse winning that fight. I'm not making any predictions. I like both men, and I'm gonna. Have I like. Both men. No, I mean, I don't. I just obviously maybe I'm a little biased because Jesse's my boy. But uh, that's a sick fight. That's a that's a really that's a that's a good Canadian matchup. So so here I'll drop some news for the for the podcast fans. Um, Three Lions Promotion obviously has their event going on September 11th. I'm bringing on Jesse Wilcox. Next week, I'm bringing on Brandon Brewer. I'm going to hit up your training partner, Jake. I'm going to bring him on if he'll do it. I don't know if he will, but I'm sure you'll tell him to. Yeah, he will. He will. He will. <laughs> um, Ryan Ruzicki, and then I'm bringing on Dan Otter, the promoter. And then on that last show, I'll make all all the predictions. There we go. All right. So I will. I will pick somebody to win. Um, between those two guys, obviously everybody knows who else I'm going to pick. I'm going to I'm going with Jake, and I'm going to go with Rizicki. But <laughs> for that for that individual fight, I will make well, that Jake's pick. Got, Jake's got a good fight too. He's fighting. He was supposed to fight Stewart his last fight. Stewart yep. uh, Twardsick from uh, Saskatchewan. Yep. Um, I think you know that guy was a good amateur, and he's a strong. He's grown. Uh, he throws a lot of punches, but. Uh, maybe I'm being biased again, but no, I, I mean, if you look at like the skill level, mm-hmm. Jake watching that guy in the gym, man, he, he is, a, he's a masterpiece, man. He's skilled. His job is nasty. He boxes and moves beautifully. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to watching him grow too. 
Let's break this fight down one more time then. You and I have done it once already. Might as well Which just one? We'll, we'll, we'll break down the, the Jake Stewart fight one more time. I know Stewart. I've done rounds with him. Okay, so yeah, you actually know Stewart. And like, I, I mean, I don't know him that well. Yeah. But I mean, I what I see happening is, you know, Stewart coming forward, being aggressive, throwing a lot of punches, and I see him getting his ass countered. That's what I see. Getting countered, getting getting frustrated when he's missing shots, yep. and you know that's what I see happening. So here, here's my issue with Stuart Torsic turning pro at the age of thirty years old. And Stuart, I'm not hating on you. I'm just being one hundred percent honest. Um, the guy's probably had three or four hundred amateur fights. He's a multiple time amateur champion. Um, his style's very. It's an amateur style, and that's not a bad thing. Does it like when when you say you do something amateurish in the real world? It means that it sucks. But when I say that you have an amateur style in boxing, it's not it's not a knock on you. It's just the style that you box in. Um, very light on your feet, hopping around all over the place, uh, coming forward constantly because in amateur boxing you get stuck with what is it four two minute rounds for your first ten fights or whatever it is, and then you're. Yeah, three, three two minute rounds yeah that's what so you gotta is. go you got high output you gotta just go yeah you have to go um stewart doesn't have a ton of professional experience he fought for ko boxing once um and what i'm gonna say is a gimme fight yeah and, and yeah. Th that's just what happens in boxing it is what it is uh you bring a mexican in from mexico to fight a canadian guy uh, nine times out of ten the mexican's going down yeah. Well, sometimes you get sometimes you get those tough ones though, man. They just won't. You hit them with everything under the sun, and they're not going down. They're usually at really lightweight classes, though. Yeah, and it, I've seen some. Like there was one, uh, Cam O'Connell. He won the fight, but man, yeah, like, he was on paper. They were like, okay, Cam's gonna crush this guy, and the guy showed up to fight, man. Yeah, one forty though. Again, that's a lightweight class. Yeah, this was years ago too. Yeah, Cam, Cam's a motherfucker too. I wonder what he's doing. He's a buddy of mine. I should hit him up. But <laughs> um, we used to spar when I lived at West. He's good. He's a good guy too. Yeah, he's tough. Uh, I'll tell you a sparring story with Cam O'Connell later in the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I think Stewart's gonna have a hard time dealing with Jake's skill set of uh, because he's a good counter puncher. Very, very good, and he's got power. Um, I don't. I've I've never seen Stewart get his chin really tested. Obviously, because we only have one pro fight. Yeah. So we don't really know what's going to happen. I believe that Stewart does have a chin because I punched him. <laughs> uh, it's it's a very yeah. it's a very close fight. I don't think Stewart could knock Jake out, but I think he could outpoint him. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. That's another. That's gonna be a good card. Rizicki, uh, my boy Jake Stewart, yeah. uh, Brandon Brewer, Jesse. That's a. That's a good looking card. So back to to your fight. Who is the gentleman that you're fighting? So his name's Jeffrey Torres. Okay. Uh, he's seven and oh, three knockouts. He fought. Uh, his debut was in 2016. He fought twice that year. Then he fought twice the next year. One in 2018 one in 2019 so he hasn't been that active but then they're looking at me and they're like oh well you weren't active for five years so they're he just fought i think in january or february he fought a guy nine and three and he got a split decision win mm -hmm. so i mean he's coming he's coming to fight he's he's game for sure he's going to be slick he's from philly he probably has good sparring um but i just i'm coming to win and when i'm on i'm on and i'm more than on right now i'm dialed in every i'm focused i've been focused and i'm just i leave it all in the ring every time i'm in there so that's i'm just extremely confident going in so for the fans that are that are watching the show and they don't know who who the boss is go to punchandgrace.com and watch his last fight because it was a fucking clinic it wasn't it wasn't yeah, close and everyone, counted, everyone counted me out for that one too because they're like oh court chesney's a strong young and he is strong he just he just fought last week and he knocked some guy out cold it was a yeah. nice knockout but uh like i feel like once he he fights people that can box and move and not just gonna sit there and take shots like that's when he's gonna find trouble and 
I mean, he's. He, I heard he said something in the in a Quebec paper that he wants a rematch. It's like I I have no need. Like the fight was not even close. I crushed you every single round. So like, there's no need for me to to give you a rematch. I'm moving forward with my career, and it's just that would be pointless. Well, hey, if they want to drop twenty grand in your lap to to rematch that well, guy, yeah. If they want to drop ten rounds and they want forty grand, then maybe yeah. Uh, maybe put a title on the line. Yeah, but. I mean, I, I see myself doing bigger things than fighting Rafi. 100%. Uh, you're, you're making a, an American debut here in this, in this fight. This opens up a whole new world of boxing. Yeah. Once you break into that American scene. Um, are you still signed up with uh, KO Boxing? Melanie Lubavik still your promoter? No, not anymore. Okay. That's terrible. But No, not, not anymore. Uh we we're looking we're free agent right now and okay she, I, don't, she, I, don't, I don't even think she's putting on shows anymore but yeah we uh we're hoping that this american fight kind of puts us down south and gets us something going on down there so would you ever be interested with signing another with another canadian promoter uh we have a we have a few different people that we're we're talking to right now but uh i mean right now things are lined up yeah and I just got to show people what I'm capable of doing. And then we're going to make a decision, me and my team, on uh, what the best option is after this fight. Yeah, I, right now you got a fight lined up. I don't see a point in signing with anybody at this moment. But yeah, no. So, like, this is, that's what I mean. So, like, we're, we do have a few options available. We're just kind of taking this fight. Um, it's a great fight. It's going to show, you know, it's going to be on UFC Fight Pass. It's going to be aired in American television. So I I want to go down south, man. Like, I, obviously, there's some great promoters here in Canada, but my goal has always been since I turned pro to eventually fight in the States. And, and now that that's happening, it's, uh, it's time. It's go time. It's time to put on. That's awesome. I'm super excited for the fight, man. I can't wait to watch it. How can we watch? It's going to be on UFC Fight Pass. UFC Fight Pass, yeah. So it's not like I don't think it's like obviously it's you know you, there might be a one time view. I haven't uh, fully figured it out, but if you go and buy like a, I'm sure if you get a monthly pass or yeah. there there might be a one time buy, but it's on UFC Fight Pass. So mm. you either have to download it or if you have it on on your your TV already, then you, it'll be on there. So here's how these things work on UFC Fight Pass. If you want a one time buy, it's going to be twenty nine ninety nine. But if you want to sign up for a month, it'll be nine ninety nine. <laughs> so yeah, so you're probably gonna end up signing up for the month. Just just and take then, the month, watch the boss yeah. beat the shit out of this guy, and then watch some yeah. old UFC and Pride shows. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, man, you got you got to support. You got to support. So it's gonna be it's gonna be. I think the main event, the two guys are from. One guy's sixteen and one, and fourteen and two. So it's gonna be. Then there's like, I think there's six or seven fights on the card. There's it's looking like a decent card. So, oh, how's your brother doing? He's always sliding into the comment section on some of my posts. Fucking Josh, my, brother, my brother's <laughs> awesome, man. He uh, he's my hype man, my manager. He's my he's my best friend, man. Yeah. My brother's he's awesome. He's selling cars now. He works for Nissan, and oh, good he has him. a family. He's he actually has a kid. Um, so they're they're due like August, I think August like fourteenth. So a week after. So when this fight oh. happened, and I'm like. He's like, I'm coming, I'm coming. And I'm like, dude, like, you sure? That's kind of cutting it close. He's like, it's all right. Like, it's a seven-hour drive, so if I have to uh, to leave, then I'll, I'm like, oh, boy. We'll see how uh, your lady feels about that. Well, congratulations but, yeah, he's to fun, you, man. brother. He, he's excited. He's, he's my main uh, – he's my hype man. He talks me up everywhere. He, he's he's on board. He, he's a, he was a professional himself, so he, he knows the game in and out. And uh, – yeah, he's he's awesome. He's doing and, well. And it's you and your brother that is this main event boxing company. Yeah, so we started this main event when we came back. Uh, we we run like all our sponsorships and everything through it. And it's I mean the the end goal is we want to uh, eventually put on our own shows here in my hometown. Okay. And uh, and eventually get fighters on on that. But yeah. Right now, obviously, it's in the in the very early stages. But as things grow and as my career takes off, uh, main event boxing is is it. So I'm I'm going to expect that your brother's going to throw one of those hats in the mail for me. 
I'll wear it on yeah, the show. Yeah, I'm, sure I'm sure we can make that happen. I got <laughs> I got some fight t-shirts. I'll send you out a fight t-shirt too for the oh, fight. I forgot to mention you did have the thing on uh, what was it, Instagram or Facebook. You you are gonna do some custom shirts. Yeah, I'll send you one for sure, man. No, I'll buy it because that's how I support you guys. Well, I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you doing these shows too, man. It's 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 appreciated. So I do I do take breaks every once in a while because I do have a family and I have to hang out with them. I'll take a month off here or there, and then I <laughs> I get guys like your brother sending me messages. Where's the fucking content? Yeah. Listen, oh, yeah. Listen. People want to see it, man. People, <laughs> even I, I love watching them. Like even yesterday, I watched Jesse, and I watch all of them. It's just, I don't know. Like, it's 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 good to keep the boxing mojo going in Canada, and that's why guys like you and other podcasts that are being put on it. Just yeah. anything to promote the sport in Canada. It's it's a great thing. It's it's so it's it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's discouraging sometimes. Because you put yeah. so much time and effort. It's the same as you guys getting ready for a fight and then the fight falls through, right? You put so much time and effort into trying to do something. And they obviously this show does benefit me. I, I'll get money or I get free shit from companies or sponsors and stuff like that. But at the at the end of the day, I'm trying to help you guys too by by just talking about it. Like The, the only way that some of these things get promoted is just by the word of mouth. Exactly, exactly. So, it makes it tough. Just, I, I just love talking. I could talk boxing all day long. So, I mean, it's just, oh, this is nice. Like, yeah. I can only talk about your fight for X amount of minutes, and then we lose fucking shit to talk about. But I do have a laundry list of other things in the boxing world that I want to talk to you about today, actually. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm down, man. So, uh, I'm asking everybody that comes on, Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley, who's your pick? Uh... Okay, so obviously I want Tyrone to win. Like, I want Jake Paul to get KO'd, but I don't know, man. Like, one thing I'll give Jake is he actually is, he puts in work. Like, I'm not saying he's the most skilled boxer. I'm not saying that at all. Like, yeah. I think obviously once he meets someone who can box and actually, like, a serious boxer, he hasn't fought a boxer. So, like, but... I, I think he's going to win, and I don't want that to happen. I want so badly for Drake Paul to get destroyed, but yeah. I don't know. I think he might win, and <clears throat> it's just going to add to this whole friggin' thing that's going on with him and coming into boxing. And But I think once he truly – but if you, okay, if you look at any pro boxer turning pro, uh, they usually have a few fights where, like, you know, my first three fights, it was guys that, like, I – I, You're supposed to be at it, like, okay, hey, that yeah. guy is going to win. So, yeah. like, if you look at Jake Paul, he's just doing that. He's just he's he hasn't had any amateur experience. He turned just went great pro. So, if you think about it, it's his first four fights. He's just fighting guys that aren't you know that good just to get in the ring and just kind of get in his groove. But I do believe that this hype will get cut off. Like once he fights a serious boxer, he'll get destroyed. But I'll get, he is, he's putting in work, and I, I don't know, I want Tyrone to win, but I, I see him beating Tyrone, which is not good. Maybe I can sway your opinion then, real quick. Um, Tyron Woodley is mostly known as being a wrestler. Yeah. But what's not talked about very much is he's been training at Wildcard for probably 10 years. With Freddy? Yeah, so he can fucking box. The, yeah, but I'm just looking at his age. So his yeah. age and his last five outings, he, he I think yeah. he it hasn't looked too good. So like, but I've seen some of his highlights. The guy's a banger. Like, that's what I mean. Like, he ain't like this is a step up, and I want Tyrone to win. But I don't know, man. Something, something's telling me that Jake Paul is gonna win this, and I, I'm not happy about saying that. I'm really not. So I put out a video and I, I made some predictions on that fight because I don't think the fight's actually a real fight. What do you mean? So in professional wrestling, there's a thing called a shoot and a work, right? So a work is a match that is predetermined. So it's okay. a, a shoot is, a, is something real. Like if a guy gets on a microphone and starts shooting off about something he's not supposed to be, he's talking for real. But I think that this fight's a work. I think it's predetermined. I think these two guys have a plan. They have all the money in the world. And realistically, I think Jake Paul beats Tyron Woodley. 
in a real fight, I think Tyron Woodley knocks his block off. I think Jake Paul beats oh, Tyron. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you know what? That very well could be. A very, like, I, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. Like, because who knows? Like, it, it's all like a WWE. Yeah. Shame. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. The the way I think this works out is Jake Paul beats Tyron Woodley. He calls out Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Floyd Mayweather goes in and does the same thing he just did with Logan Paul. Logan Paul now is fighting Anderson Silva, which is a bad idea because Anderson Silva doesn't fuck around. No, that's a real fight. I think I think that's a the real Mayweather one. Paul was an exhibition, and people they fooled everyone, and everyone was asking me, "Oh, who's gonna win?" I'm like, guys, it's not a real fight. It's an exhibition. It's sparring. Yeah. It's a sparring match. Like, that's not a re- there's no real winner. I think. But the Logan and uh, Anderson Silva, I think that's going to be a real scrap. And it's, I think Anderson Silva is going to rock him. Did you see what Anderson Silva did to Chavez Jr.? Yeah, man. He, I mean, Chavez Jr. doesn't take training seriously. But to do that to him still, that yeah, that was wild. That was wild. Realistically, a former world champion in boxing. Yeah. Uh, an MMA was guy huge. shouldn't be coming over and doing that, right? Like Chavez Senior was not was not the happiest uh, no. to see him after. He, he was pissed. It's, yeah, it, it's a yeah. It, that was his dad's show, right? That was his dad's time to shine, and and his son goes out there and gets worked over by an over the hill MMA guy. <laughs> the fuck, man! <laughs> really? Do you so hate your dad? Do, do you hate so your bad? Do you like, hate your got, dad? Like, he got schooled. It, it wasn't even close. Like, no, yeah, I'm pretty sure he got beat up. He got beat up bad. Yeah. Like, Chavez yeah. Jr., do you hate your father? Like, you embarrassed him. <laughs> Shit. Did you, did, you, did you see the Chavez Sr.? See him take off his headgear and get all at uh, Hector Camacho? Did you watch it? <laughs> I didn't watch the senior fight, no. It's hilarious. So, like, they had his headgear on. Yeah. And they were going at it, and then, like, it got serious, and, like, he took off his headgear, and then. Canelo came in. It was a big. Uh, oh my god! It was a big. It was pretty funny. It was a good show. Listen, what the fuck did you guys think was gonna happen? That guy's a bad motherfucker. Chavez yeah, Senior is a bad dude. I don't care how old he is. If he gets clipped, it's go time. And that's what happened. The guys started. Go, they started. You know, they started off like just kind of going at it, and then they st- really started hitting each other. And then you know how it is. Like even yeah. you go into a gym, that's usually how it goes. Oh, we're gonna go light today, boys. And then one guy lands a shot, and you're like, all right, we're, we're going at it today, I guess. This, this is my biggest worry with Mike Tyson getting in the ring. Because if Mike Tyson and, and Evander Holyfield go at it, Evander Holyfield has CTE. I don't know how many more shots that guy can take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he, he has a fucking handler. So if Evander Holyfield clips Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's 54 years old. He still hits like a Mack truck. Yeah, man, that's why I don't even, especially if you know you have something wrong with your brain. Like, yeah, like, I get it, man. The fighter spirit lives on. Like, I, I understand, like, there's no feeling like, you know, going into the ring. And like, I, I, I'm totally with that. But, man, there's comes a point where it's like you got to grow and, like, you got to move on, man. Like, you can't be getting punched in the head your whole life. It doesn't, we weren't designed to get hit in the head. You know what I mean? So, no. Like, what do you expect is going to happen? Uh, me being, I'm 39 years old now. I got asked the other day, oh, would you ever take another fight? Uh, and sitting where I sit now, um, I've spent the whole time of COVID putting on size. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to lift weights. So yeah. I, w- I went from 218 pounds, I'm 250. Yeah, you look, man, you look, but you don't look bad. You look, you look nice. You look jacked, bro. Yeah, I'm big. Like, I'm bigger than, like, way bigger than normal. How, how tall are you? Six foot, 250. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a unit. Yeah. That's a unit. <laughs> that's a unit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a, I got a little bit of a gut that I need to, need to shore up. But when you guys want to put on size, what do you got to do? You got to eat. Yeah, 100%. And I'm not fucking old enough to be, uh, I'm too old to be burning that shit off. So I got to do it in other ways. So, so what, you in the gym every day or what? Every day lifting weights. Nice, good for you, bro. Thank you. That's what's up. But uh, I got asked, hey Tanner, would you would you consider taking another fight? I said, well, probably not unless it's the right person. There's like two guys on the planet I'd love to kill. If you can get one of those two guys to go in the ring, I'll do it. But other than that, no, I'm not interested. Wait, boxing or, or MMA? Strictly boxing. Yeah. I'm not, I'm no fucking way I'm doing MMA ever again. <laughs> Too, 
too old well, for that. Who are, these two, who are these two guys? <clears throat> Maybe we'll, uh, we'll we'll get it set up. Um, one of them will one of them will never fight me. His name's Lino Santoro. He's just a piece of shit. Um, and the other one's Jay Bird, that guy from Quebec. I, I called him out. No, no, I think he lives out, out west, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Cause I see him posting videos of him him training or like. Yeah, he's he's blocked me on every social media platform known to man. I've called him out a bunch of times. Uh, he called me a coward and then wouldn't accept the fight. So I don't know how I'm a coward when I called you out, but you won't take it. Yeah, I, you know what, man? I realize there's a lot of those people around. Like, I don't know him, so I mean, I'm not talking about him, but I'm just saying, like, there was a guy that kept posting. He's 0-3. Mm -hmm. Uh and he was posting online, and it was kind of getting under my skin. So I told my coach, I'm like, just bring him in for sparring. Like, this is kind of getting ridiculous now. And he was like, Go. I didn't even know who this guy was, man. Like, he was just out of nowhere, just started posting, like, Wagner is a coward. And, like, he, I, and I'm like, dude, I don't, who are you? Like, So then I looked him up, and, like, man, it came down. Like, we were doing sprints one morning at the track, and this guy showed up in his car, and he's like, like, what's up? And I'm like, coach, this is enough. Like, enough of this. Like, I had to keep my calm because my coach was like, Josh, we, you're going to get people like this everywhere you go. Like, these guys are stupid. You know what I mean? So, like, but a guy like that, it's a, it's a waste of time. Like, okay, okay, you, you bring him to the gym and you, and you knock him out. This is what coach was saying. Like, what does that do? What does that really – you already know you can do that. Like, he's going to be the same after that. He's going to go start chirping someone else. So – or or he'll just keep chirping you. you. It, 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 yeah. So there's yeah exactly. It all exactly. depends on what kind of psychopath this guy is. Like you beat him up and then he keeps doing it, or you beat him up and he goes and tries it with somebody else, or you beat him up and he goes away. Yeah. The last one's probably not going to happen. Well, that was my argument with coach. I'm like, coach, just let me beat this guy up and he'll go away. He's like, no, that's no, but, not going to happen. It, it, he won't. It was like, well, say it's starting. You know, you're showing up to where I'm training. It's like, okay, that's a bit too far, man. Well, that that's stalkerish, man. That's borderline. He want. He might have a crush on you. I was thinking that too. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you want a date with Wags, you got to call me. You got to get through me first. I got to see your resume. You got to line out what <laughs> the itinerary. You got to have something romantic planned. A bottle of wine, a present, something. You got to bring something to the table here. Yeah, hundred percent. But I don't want to know the guy. What do you got? What do you got in the background there? You got USG gloves. What do you got? These are all the sponsors, my man. So we got USG Canada. Um, maybe I'll get my boy Howie to because you guys are in the same province. You're actually fairly close. Where are you located? I'm like forty minutes north of Toronto. He's in Mississauga. I'm gonna get him to send you a pair of gloves. Yeah. So I, I my gym is in Mississauga. I train in Saga. Oh really? I'll get him to swing in with a pair of gloves. Yeah, that'd be that'd be wicked, man. I, um, I literally I train like right not downtown Saga, but I train in Mississauga. That's where my gym is. So I actually the Wits, I design boxing studio. I design these gloves specifically for myself. They have a, a specific cavity and a specific cuff that I like. Nice. So I'll I'll talk to you about them off the air. Maybe I'll see if that's the, the kind of thing that you like, and then I'll get them to get you a pair. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try them out for sure. Right now, I'm wearing. I was wearing uh, my sparring gloves are rival. I just picked up a new pair of bag gloves, uh, Everlast. I actually, I used them today for the first time. I, I like those. But if I get the option, like when we're down south, I think I want to pick, I fought in Reyes, oh, yeah. uh, my second pro fight. And those, those are, I love those gloves, man. You know, when I, when I talk to guys about gloves and competition gloves, I always point people towards rival gloves. So my, my, my third fight, I fought in Calgary for my fourth fight, third or fourth fight, and I fought in rival gloves, and I, I didn't like them at all. Okay. And then my last fight in Quebec, I fought in rival again, and he, the, the gloves were different. He must have done something different because I love them. The rival was, it felt nice. They were eight ounces, so like it was like nothing on my hands. It was sweet. It's because there is nothing on your knuckles. It's all on the back of your hand. That's why I always tell guys to get them. It's like fighting with yeah. nothing on your yeah. knuckles. <laughs> like when you when you punch, you can literally feel like you're like, hey, he felt knuckle on that one. Like you feel it in his face. That that's you know? why I always recommend it because ninety percent of the time, the guy standing across the ring from you is going to have a pair of rivals on. It, yeah, it might as well be an even playing field. 
Well, I think sometimes they give you the option. So they'll give you like, you know, you can have these ones or these ones. Yeah. Like, and then whenever you weigh in, so you go and you see the doctor and then you weigh in and then you, you check your gloves out and then yeah. you tell them yes or no, whatever ones you want. Yeah, I, I always I always say that uh, if you wear a rival glove and you're a heavyweight, somebody's usually going to the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Or your face is going to look pretty banged up. Right? Yeah. Um, the other stuff that's over here is obviously Sovereign Extracts, best THC, CBD stuff on the planet. If you're into vaping or you want to, you got the the fucking vaporizer things that you can drive, sh put shatter in or whatever. These guys make a fantastic product. They also have CBD drops and THC drops. Um, I'm also sponsored by one of the biggest supplement companies on the planet. And that's on it. If you're not on it, get on it at on it.com forward slash TFS podcast and save some money on your fucking purchase. Um, TKO beards, the best beard. You know, we need to get you to grow full beard bikes. Yeah, I know. I just, I just shaved like, a week ago so i mean i'm not but when i train i don't know man like i don't like it freshly shaven yeah i look like a child but like i like a little bit more than this so i'm trying to get it perfect for the fight okay okay if, if it gets yeah. a little bit longer we can start using some beard oil in there yeah because I, I gotta look good on tv so um and then we've got the mother the mother load of all but you got a girlfriend now so you don't need one of these right yeah, I got the best girlfriend, so I don't need... No what is that? This is a fucking flashlight. You know what a flashlight is? Uh, oh, yeah. No, I remember <laughs> this from last time. I was laughing at this. We're, That's we're hilarious. Sponsored by Flashlight. So if you guys want a flashlight, hit me up. Um, all of them have been pre-used, so they are good. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Do something. Do you have sponsors that, uh, that are helping you out with this fight? Yeah, um... So I have my, I have my main sponsor, uh, Owl Radiology. Uh, he's a part of the team full time. And then for this fight, I have uh, the plumbing expert here in Orangeville, um, Deja Vu Diner, my, my go-to diner. I'm there almost every day. They're like family to me. Okay. Uh, Orangeville Nissan and uh, a company called Fuse Logistics. So... Yeah, we got some sponsors on board for uh, for this fight, so I want to say thank you to all of them. And you know, without they help out with a lot of costs and uh, and uh, this, you know, the cost of this sport. So, shout out to them. Do you have anybody doing your walkout gear? So I do every fight since I've since I've turned pro. I, I there's a company called Boxer B O X X E R, and I think they're based out of like Thailand. They do like Muay Thai stuff, but. I love them because you can literally, like, you can pick whatever you can think of on the trunk, like, down to, like, you know, everything. I can't explain it. Like, you can pick, like, this and that, and different colors, and put yeah. sparkles or no sparkles, matte, satin. Like, I, I don't know. I've had very good experience with them, so I just, that's my go-to, and every time it's perfect. So, okay. it's, it's Boxer World or something like that. I, I got to get you in contact with my guy, Howie. Obviously, he's a Canadian guy, but he does custom walkout gear, uh, USG Canada. Um, when you give him your sponsors, you know when you put sponsors on your on your trunks, that's usually like yeah. a patch? Yeah. He has it printed into the fabric so you don't have any extra weight on your shorts. Okay. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, that is, that is, that, you know, I'll actually... If you send me the link or whatever, I'll check it out for sure. Okay. Not for, like I already have my stuff made for this fight, yeah. but for upcoming fights, I'll, I'll check it out. Check it out, and uh, well, I'll get him to stop into your gym at some point, and you can just talk to him because you guys, if you're going to the gym in Mississauga, it's right there. Yeah, yeah, He's for there. sure. So uh, the the other bo the other big boxing thing I wanted to talk to you about is the the debacle between Tyson Fury and uh, Anthony Joshua. That big fight was supposed to happen, and then Deontay Wilder stuck his damn nose in it and, and fucked it all up for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I think for me personally, I mean, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think Fury beat Wilder in the first fight and yes. they got a draw. Yeah, he got dropped hard. Yeah, I get it. But he won every single round. Then he fought him again and he crushed him. Yeah. Like, to me, and I get there's rematch clauses for a reason, so you have to obey. Like, I, I get it. You, you got to do what you got to do. But 
So Wilder's just trying to make another dollar. Yeah. But I, the fight that I want to see is, yeah, Anthony Joshua versus Fury is a huge. It, it's one of the biggest heavyweight fights, in my opinion, in a long time. Yeah. And, yeah, like, that needs to happen. And I, I think Usyk is just going to get crushed. Really? By Josh. Yeah. I think like, Usyk's going to get crushed. Really? I don't think he's going to get crushed. I think I think he, he'll... He's too small, man. You don't see Chisora. He couldn't even... That's he true. couldn't even... Yeah, he beat up Chisora. He outboxed him. But, like, the weight, you could tell. Yeah. Like, he's not that big at all. I, if something bad happens and Usyk ju- does pull that fight out, we've lost the Tyson Fury-Anthony Joshua fight forever. It's gone. Well, then Usyk... Then Usyk... Yeah, Usyk stepped up. Like that would be that'll throw a little Ugh, Tyson little, Fury. Uh, Ty, Ty, Tyson Fury would murder Usyk. It's, it wouldn't even be close. He's too fucking big. Well, even like if Wilder, in my opinion, fought Joshua, like well, Wilder fights anyone, he's dangerous. If he hits you, yep. you're you're going to sleep. Like that's just what it is. So he already he always has that in his back pocket. But Fury, man, he can if. Some people diss on him, but like, man, if you if you watch him, he can box like a lightweight. Like he's moving yeah. around and he's jumping at three hundred and fifty pounds. The guy's jumping around like no tomorrow. Yeah, he he's the best boxer on the planet right now when it comes to big men. Hands down, the best. I agree. Nobody's close, and I don't think anybody can beat him. Me neither. I think I honestly and just his con- like we all know in this in boxing, like confidence is a huge thing. Yeah, and I know he has his demons that he deals with, but when he's on, there's no messing with the, with the Gypsy King, man. He's he's a beast. I think I think Tyson Fury gets the the Wilder fight done quicker this time, and I think if he was to fight Anthony Joshua, I don't think it would go very well for Anthony. I think Anthony's too stiff. Yeah, but. It's heavyweight boxing, yeah. so like you, you know what I mean, like and drop a few times, fact. But wait, like I said, when he's on, he's on, he's on. He's on. So and I mean, I don't, I don't know how hard he's training. I'm assuming that he's taking it serious, or I mean, if he's not, then anything could happen. You know, yeah. that's how how this game goes. Hopefully, he's training hard. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, you you see those gypsy guys though. Like Tyson Fury grew up just hey, you want to fight over here, bare knuckle today? Sure, okay. So yeah, like, <laughs> like people like that's a different breed, man. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't. I'm not a massive fan of that bare knuckle stuff. Uh, I tuned into a bare knuckle fight the other day because I I had a friend and a, a podcast uh, alumni was was fighting, and I tuned in to watch it. I'm not a big fan. I haven't really got into it. I, I've seen a couple highlights on YouTube or whatever, but yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, so I'll, I'll spell, just, I'll, spell this, I'll spell this fight out for you a little bit. What, what I seen was Aaron Tohill is a, a declarated MMA fighter. Also very, very high level boxer fought Layla Ali. Some of the best women ever in boxing and held her own. Like she's very good. She's fought for world titles. Very, very good. She fought another lady that had fought maybe a couple MMA fights, and they said, hey, you want to fight Baron Uncle? She was like, all right, fuck it, why not? It was like watching a street fighter versus a heavily skilled fighter. And you know when, yeah. when you're in the gym and you're like, oh, new guy over here, let's, let's call him Tim. Tim, hey, uh, Wags, Tim's over here, you want to get a few rounds with him? Okay, cool. Now, Tim isn't a very skilled boxer, but he throws bombs from places that you don't know where they're coming from and you get hit. Yeah, it's awkward. It's it's weird. Yeah. And you get they don't give you enough time to get used to it. So you're getting pieced up by some guy that doesn't know what the fuck he's doing or some girl that has no idea. They're just chucking. Yeah. And you're getting hit. And then and then they get the decision. It's a fucking weird thing to watch. Is that is that what happened? Exactly what happened. Yeah. See in that case you just gotta start like you just gotta start throwing. Like if they're throwing wild, you just gotta out throw them. So her, when when she came out and she talked after the fight, she's like, "Fuck, I couldn't even start chucking because it's bare knuckle. I get hit, or I get cut. Maybe they stop the fight. Like you don't know. Yeah. You're getting hit with bare knuckles. It's, it's basically well, even like take it in, man. Like you know, you got your hands up. 
Like, yeah. imagine getting punched in the wrist over and over. Like, that's going to hurt. Yeah. So, like, even in, even in pro boxing, my last fight, it was eight ounce gloves. Like, you could punch right through the glove. Even if, like, because, like, even if you have tight D, just punch right through them. Like, you, you, the guy's feeling it for sure. 100%. So, I understood yeah. where she was coming from by saying, like, I'm keeping my hands up. Yeah, for right. sure. So, it's just a weird thing for me to watch. Now, if you watch two highly skilled bare knuckle boxers like uh jimmy sweeney and um melvin gillard something like yeah. that it's it's very good to watch well it's in like an, is it an octagon isn't it well the one that i was watching was in this thing it was a tr- fucking triangle it was the weirdest thing i ever seen in my life yeah have you seen the five on five in russia stuff <laughs> like yeah. you know, there's five guys going on <laughs> yeah that shit's wild, man. Imagine that. That's a game imagine, fight. Like, imagine your buddy gets knocked out and then three guys just get on you. Like, that's, like, how do you referee that? That That's called a gang fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, if, if I'm going to go do one of those fights, I'm going to find the toughest street gang of all time, and then I'm picking four of those guys to go with me. 100%, dude. Fuck that. It, it, combat sports is in such a weird place right now where we got bare knuckle boxing going on in triangle rings we got dudes in russia having gang fights we got youtubers fighting tiktokers we got youtubers fighting the best boxers on the planet that are fucking doing weird it's weird yeah i honestly i well at the end of the day it's all for money but like that's why even me taking this fight like in my last fight i'm trying to show that there is true fighters left like i i'm not I want hard fights. Like, I don't... And moving forward, it's going to be the same. Like, that's one thing my fans can look forward to is I'm never shying away from a challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking... Obviously, I want to get paid. Yes, of course. That would be lovely. But, like, I... I truly pride myself on fighting hard competition. And it's... When you when you get the win, it feels like... Yeah, you can go beat up a guy you know with a losing record or a guy that you're supposed to just kill but like i find there's something there's something in it when you're actually got a real challenge ahead of you and 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 you overcome that like that's how it should be it should like boxing it should be fight the best fight the best but that's not how it is these days no it's all about money and viewers on instagram and this and that so it's a crazy world we live in man well, back in the day, like not even back in the day, like five years ago, the way you made money in boxing was by coming up through the ranks, fighting a world champion, beating that world champion, and defending your belt. Yeah. That's how you made money. You can still do that now, but you need to have a million fucking people on Instagram follow you. Exactly. Or they don't even look at it. They're like, oh. Yeah. Like, oh, this guy's a great fighter, but it's like, have you heard of the guy Chris Mabilly? Have you no. seen that guy? So he's like, I think he's Canelo's weight, 168. Okay. Uh, you should check him out. The guy's a beast, but no one wants to fight him because, like, he doesn't have the the biggest following. But man, that guy's a, that guy's something to be reckoned with. Like, I see that guy doing something, and no one even knows about him. Like, you don't even, you never even heard of him. But if you ever watch him fight, you're gonna be like, oh shit! Like, the guy can fight. I'm gonna and check he's him strong. Out. Yeah, Chris Mabilly, M B I L L I. I think he actually fights out of Eye of the Tiger. Really? Then I should yeah. know him. I've probably seen him fight, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah, he just debuted on PBC, like, I think two or three months ago, and he he, he clocked the guy pretty good. Huh. I've probably seen him yeah. fight, and I just yeah. didn't pay attention to the fucking I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to rush this at all, but my uh, I'm just at the gym, and I don't have a, my charger, and it's at 3%, so I don't want to I don't want to die on you. We're, we're at that point anyway in the show, Wags. We can get the fuck out of here. Beauty, buddy. Honestly, thank you so much for uh, for having me back on. It's it's good to see your face again, man. Dude, best of luck in the fight, guys. If you want to check out the fight, what's the date? August seventh. So two weeks Saturday. Two weeks Saturday. UFC Fight Pass. Do not miss it. I'll make the prediction right now. Uh, the boss victory round three knockout. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Guys, that's the final shot.